the 844 system where learners will spend eight years for primary, four in secondary school, and four years at the university. The CBC curriculum runs on a 2633 system of education where the basic education comprises of three levels early year, middle year, and senior school education. The JSS falls under middle school education comprising of grade 7, 8, and 9. The 844 curriculum became inconsistent with the aspirations of our growing nation. The old must give way to the new. The summons of our times requires us to reimagine how we educate our children. As the first group of JSS learners begin their grade 7 education, they are pursuing proposed 14 subjects, out of which 12 subjects are compulsory. In the new curriculum design, KICD earlier indicated that the core 12 subjects to be taught will include English, Kiswahili, Mathematics, Integrated Science, Health Education, Pre-Education, Social Studies, Religious Education, Business Studies, Agriculture, Life Skills Education, Sports and Physical Education. Optional subjects provided include visual arts, performing arts, home science, computer science, and foreign languages. The ministry has released comprehensive interim guidelines to all schools and our field officers to guarantee a smooth start of the junior secondary school education learning. Kisumu County has registered 99% enrollment rate in JSS after 35,859 of 36,055 students were admitted to various learning institutions. Due to the ongoing controversies and challenges in the JSS transition, we conducted an extensive tour of schools within Kisumu Central to establish the reality on the level of preparedness concerning the implementation of JSS transition. For us here, we started teaching immediately. What made it work also was the fact that I think government had a noble idea. Put it under primary school. One reason was we are well versed with CBC. We didn't need to train our teachers. So what they, and since the head teacher is in charge, things would run, you would not let classes go untaught that waiting for government. The teachers would say, we don't have textbook, we tell them Google. Despite the numerous challenges, delays in funds, inadequate textbooks, and lack of enough facilities from the government, the head teacher and the rest of the teaching staff have worked tirelessly to ensure that learning does not come to halt. It is a new thing, yet we are required to re register all learners in NEMIS afresh because junior secondary has been given a different code away from primary school. Every school will be given funds according to the number registered. The, the funds are dispersed according to the enrollment of each institution. The books are, are, the, are distributed according to the number of the earners. So far in our school, we've struggled and registered over 280. We are left with a few who are still struggling with birth certificate. You know, one condition to be registered in name is you must have a birth certificate. Junior secondary schools in the county have received a boost in their teaching staff as TSC has deployed new teachers to this institution. This move comes as a relief to many schools that were struggling with a shortage of teachers. However, understaffing of teachers is still a problem in public schools due to higher teacher-student ratio compared to private schools. The figure for the, for the county that was 792 teachers were employed for junior secondary category and we have already deployed them uh, to different uh, schools. So we subdivided them, we gave them uh, to the faculties within the sub-counties. And I think it's all, it's all, it's, uh, it's all central at 73 of them. Initially, we received five teachers, specifically interns for JSS. And then later on, uh, there were three three teachers from our primary section that were also promoted to join the JSS. So altogether we have eight teachers in our school. What I can say, those that were posted and you specifically for JSS, they handle all the learning areas that are there. 
the distance that we had for primary that were promoted, there are some learning areas that they handled in primary, and they also handled those ones in uh, JSS. For the JSS, we have two categories of teachers. Number one, we have the teachers we recruited fresh in the field. And, and uh, the criteria was equally the same. They must have had a degree with the two teaching subjects, and they must have scored a uh, main grade of C plus and a math in both uh, teaching subjects and also in the main grade. Number two, they must have trained. Uh, they must have uh, been registered as teachers. And then number three, uh, they must have filled the interest through the application. So that is basically the basic uh, training. And then we have the second category, uh, the teachers who are deployed uh, to teach ESS. These are P1 teachers who are originally teaching in the primary school. The so primary school, we don't get any teachers from the government. But uh, we went the next one my and got our own teachers. We have uh, five extra teachers, high school trained teachers who are helping with the DSS. We monitor both uh, private and we monitor the, the public schools. As a school, as a private school, I've not seen anyone from TSC asking us about our teachers. But we have that requirement, all the teachers around should be TSC trained. We don't have any, any issues with the private school because we must look at the quality of teachers entering the service. So we even check uh, the qualification of teachers. The delay in providing textbooks to junior secondary schools by the government has been a major concern due to lack of access to educational materials, which can impact the academic performance negatively. In contrast, private schools have been able to obtain textbooks for their students by purchasing textbooks directly from publishers or distributors. The books that uh, the government were going to roll out, they began rolling out. And I think all together we have seven books. That we have special classrooms. We have enough textbooks. The, re the teacher ratio is set. Is set. This is a good. We have enough teachers. We have the library. And uh, we have the own sales lab. We are ready, we are here for JSS, and our teachers have been going training to be taught like a sale. There is a significant disparity in the teacher-student ratio between private and public junior secondary schools in the county. Despite these disparities, the Ministry of Education is working to bridge the gap between private and public school teacher-student ratios by increasing funding for public schools so that they can hire more teachers. We have 90, 90 something in a classroom handle with one teacher. We have enough teachers. All our learners general are uh, much advantaged than uh, the learners in public schools. And also the experience of being in primary schools, the work we do with our learners, you compare it with them. Our standard schools is better. The private schools have an advantage over the public schools because of the number of teachers they have, as uh, they had before. Uh, but right, right now, TSC has already recruited teachers for JSS, and so to, to, to bridge the gap. But in public schools, because of the large enrollment and the 100% transition, we have many learners in a class. In a bid to assess the level of preparedness, experiences and challenges of teachers in handling the JSS content, Mr. Fidel Castro, a grade 7 teacher from Golden Airlines, heard this to think. It was not a surprise to us. So we knew. The only thing that maybe could have, uh, could have gone through our mind was uh, about, um, uh, okay, what were we going to teach? Because by that time, the books were not yet out. We didn't know the, the, the syllabus, what was going to be taught, the content of the syllabus and everything. So that was, uh, maybe that is what I can say as a teacher, worried us. But in terms of preparation, we, have, uh, we were trained how to handle, only that we are waiting for the materials. So there's nothing much that worried us as, as teachers, eh? because the experience is the same. Only that now the content, the workload that you're talking about has been increased. Because remember the learning areas, don't call them the subject, call them the learning areas. So the learning areas have been, uh, uh, have been increased from uh, the usual 12, now to 14. In the 844 system, it was a more of a uh, theory. So a teacher could just come and then use that one book to teach. But now here, the uh, people need to have their own books uh, or maybe the textbooks. 
So maybe it's a challenge. But with us here in Golden, we have enough distance. And also you know, remember that here now the science, now the practicals have been brought back. They are now here. We have, we have biology, we have physics, and we also have our chemistry. So maybe to schools who don't have the lab, with us we have the lab that we have seen. And maybe the equipment which you are bought, they are expensive. So what about those schools which can which afford such? We did not have enough facilities in our institutions like uh, most of our institutions did not have uh, laboratories and um, enough classrooms. However, the ministry has dispersed funds uh, so that uh, each school is, is now able to put up a laboratory and uh, more classrooms. For parents of grade 7 students, this transition has been a daunting experience as their child enters a new phase of their education. They have reported mixed experiences in that some have found it challenging to navigate the new school system, while others have found it relatively easy. However, with proper support and guidance, parents can help their child navigate this new phase of their academic journey and set them up for success. <laughs> This one is easy. I don't know if you can have a machine and buy a walk or a commissary. There are no facilities in these institutions that have been put aside for particular purposes of the DSS, apart from the ones that are earlier on in putting those initial screens that were designated for DSS. Once at the PISA, who now might be mainly a boy and what you are as. I mean, you love them, but you are among Zaz, Neza, which you are more than on this work. But in the frontalier, then it can't be wild. Those ones who live in those rural areas, we love a big challenge. Okay, it was not easy for us as parents because the items which were required for these students from grade six to join grade seven, which is now junior secondary, it was high in prices. If we start with the exercise books, they needed like. 19 exercise books a four. They needed school uniform. Yeah? Trousers, blazers, sweaters, you know? And the school uniform alone was going roughly around 7,000. Then, if you live in the school uniform, now there was something called feeding program, which they were charging like 5,000 per term. So, if you calculate it in a year, it is like 20,000 because in a term there is three terms there. Yeah, so it is not easy for us. The TSC Kisumu County Director expressed his satisfaction with the progress made so far. He also highlighted the importance of continuous training for teachers. The County Director of Education, Ms. Rosemary Bijenge, says that they are ensuring schools have adequate resources and funding to provide quality education to students going forward. For the extra training, uh, we have been retooling the school. We are the ones who have given them the training now to be able to manage the CBC and the junior secondary category. And we have done the training of all the teachers who are employed in that category. Maybe the challenge would be the numbers, the number of teachers may be some place. But as far as the junior secondary school, uh, for the one class, we are adequately staffed. The funding to school is done by the Ministry of Education. And uh, for our operations, we don't have any challenge, and our operations are very small. This education is free. The government is paying for the teachers, and even for uniform, we have advised the, the teachers. They are not supposed to set away the children because of lack of uniform. These sons are disbursed through the school's individual school's accounts. Each school opened two accounts, uh, tuition and uh, operation account. And uh, as we speak now, this money has already been disbursed. In conclusion, the transition from primary to junior secondary school is a critical phase in the educational journey of every child. As highlighted in this documentary, this period comes with its unique set of challenges, including academic and social adjustments, increased workload, and the need to adapt to new learning environments. However, despite these challenges, many students have successfully navigated this phase and gone on to excel academically and in other areas of life.